Good morning, everybody, and welcome to um, our latest FSB webinar. It's one of the national webinars we do across the country. Uh, you're all extremely welcome to be here. Um, my name is Sam Holliday. I'm one of the development managers for the FSB, which means I cover a certain patch. And my patch is Gloucestershire, Bristol and Bath. So if you're from my patch, as our speaker is, you're very welcome, but you're welcome wherever you're from. Just to let you know a bit about what we're going to be doing today. Um, obviously, you know the subject, which is why we're so glad excuse me, you're on time, because it's about time management. Uh, but we're not going to be doing the usual kind of networking thing where everybody sort of puts things in the chat box. We're just going to be looking for your questions. So if you have any questions, which you'll, you'll be getting through what you hear from uh, Neil, then just pop it into the Q&A box at the bottom, and I will present them to him at the end. So whatever crops up or whatever's on your mind about how you run your business, what the time uh, factors is, then we'll try and answer them for you. If I can answer one of the first questions everyone asks, will the slides be available? They will. They'll be probably available in the next few days. So you'll be able to, if you can't see it all today or you miss some of it a bit later, don't worry, you'll be seeing the slides. And if you can't stay for the whole hour or you know anyone else that would benefit from this, then don't worry about that either because we're going to be putting our FSB on demand website. So probably in the middle of next week, you'll be able to see all this again uh, and it'll be there for about 120 days. So you want to see it again if you want to find better use of your time for other people to be able to see how to make the most of their time then you can do it on the fsb on demand site um just to um before i pass over to neil to do his his, his webinar and it's good by the way i have seen it um if you aren't a member of the fsb then we'd love you to find out a bit more about what we do so drop me a line put, uh, i'll put my uh, um uh, details in when i ask about questions or talk to anybody that's involved with the FSB and we'll put you in touch with someone who can explain the benefits of being part of Britain's biggest and best business group. Um, so um, thank you again for joining us. Um, we'll now uh, go into our subject matter and it is about time. It, some of us are better than others. Uh, some of us uh, know how to organise our diaries better than others, but it's something that we constantly need to think about. Are we making the most of our time? Are we being as productive as we can with our time? Is time something that we're in charge of, or sometimes feels like it's in charge of us. Well, I'm hoping Neil's going to answer some of those questions, but if there's anything that you don't think has been covered, or you really want to query some of the things that Neil says, that's what the question and answer is for. So you can see that box at the bottom, put your questions in there, and I'll hand them over to Neil at the end. So I'd now like to uh, introduce our speaker, uh, Neil Martin is from Action Coach in Cheltenham, and over to you, Neil. Thank you. Thank you, Sam, and thank you for the uh, the introduction and inviting me to deliver this session today. Now, we're here to talk about time and time management. But just before we get into that detail, I just want to ask a quick question. And that question is quite a simple one. Do you know what your biggest focus in your business needs to be right now? Because in order to make our time as productive as possible, we also need to know what it is we're focusing our time on. What's the outcome that we're trying to create? Where are we trying to get to? Where are we trying to move to over the next three months, 12 months, 18 months, three years, five years? You know, what does that look like? So what does the, the next level of your business look like? And what does your focus need to be to get you there? Now, during today's session, we're going to be talking about the myth of time management, because time management is a myth. And I'll come back to that shortly. We're going to be talking about ways to deal with time stealers. We're going to be talking about how to make more time for yourself, how to make your business more scalable so that you're trading less time for money, and clear strategies so that you can achieve more each day towards both your business and your personal goals. <clears throat> but what are the big things that get in the way? What are the big challenges that, as a senior business coach, I hear about on a pretty much daily basis? Because there are only three. There are three things that almost every challenge in business seems to come down to. And those three things are quite simple. So those big three things, the first one is what we're going to be focusing on today, which is time. And you know, if you're watching this right now, let me ask you a question. How many hours a day are you currently working in your business? How many hours a day are you currently working in your business? And then let me ask you another question. How many hours a day are you currently working on your business? So how many of your hours are spent doing strategic stuff and how many are spent on the tactical and operational stuff? And again, I'll come back to that a little bit more as we progress through this session for the next sort of 35, 40 minutes. And then obviously the Q&A that Sam already mentioned at the end. But aside from team, what are the other two big challenges? Uh, sorry, aside from time, what are the other two big challenges? I let one of them slip there and it is team. 
you know, how effective is your team right now on a scale of one to 10? In an ideal world, what would they be? You know, what difference would it make to you if you had a high performing team? And if, for example, your team right now is a six out of 10 or a seven out of 10, what if it improved by just one point? What would that look like? But on the flip side, what if it dropped by one point? What would the impact of that be? And then the other big one is money. You know, what's your ideal profit for the next 12 months? What would you do with that extra money? Because if we're going to be investing our time in trying to create a result, we need to understand what the result is that we are trying to create. And I should stress, everything that we are covering today is based on real examples, real techniques, real strategies, real tactics being used by real people on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you look at the screen as it is at the moment, you'll see there in the top corner, it's like a flip chart. So this is actually a screenshot from one of our 90-day planning events that, oddly enough, we've run every 90 days with our clients. You can see there's a flip chart there. And one of the things we do at every one of those events is get our clients to put on the flip chart some of their big successes for the last 90 days. And I just want to share a couple of them with you from our last event. So first of all, best January ever. 10-day Christmas break, no weekends, no early starts, no late finishes. I should point out, this is from an accountancy practice. And what happens for most accountants in January? They're working crazy hours, right? Because everyone wants their tax returns and things done there and then. But because of planning, because of better use of time management, actually, this, this person went on holiday as well. I know they, they took a, a, like a long weekend away during January as well that's not written on there. In addition to that, you know, another one of our clients met all of their deadlines for both December and January. Well, how do you meet all of your deadlines? Well, first of all, you've got to establish what those deadlines are, and then you have to get good at how you invest your time. So let me get straight into the detail and talk about time management. Because I already said, you know, time management, it's a myth. Time management is a myth. If you're looking for ways to manage time, you can't do that. Why can't you do that? Because time keeps happening. Time is happening right now. Yeah, you know, I think I've been talking for about two minutes so far. Those two minutes have gone. I can't get those two minutes back. When I pause and take a sip of water, <clears throat> those are a few, a few more seconds that are gone can't get those seconds back. The time you're investing right now watching this webinar, you don't get that time back. Okay, the time keeps going regardless. So you can't control time. But what you can do is control what you do with that time. See, every single one of us gets 168 hours a week. But where are you spending your 168 hours? What are you doing with them? Yeah, if I told you you've got 168 pounds or 168,000 pounds, in a week, but it's only there for the week and you have to and you have to spend it or invest it. How careful would you be with the planning of that money? You've got one week to spend 168,000 pounds. What would you do with it? All right, because it's gone at the end. And would you invest it in something that's building you a future? Because it's the same thing with time. You have that 168 hours in each week. And there's a great quote that I like from Lee Iacocca, who was big in the motor industry in the US. And he says, if, a business, if you're a business person and you can't be at home by six o'clock for dinner with your family, you're doing something wrong. You're doing something wrong. Because think about it. What are we in business for? If you run a business right now, what do you run a business for? If running a business should give you more life. It shouldn't take your life away. It shouldn't take you away from all of the things that you, know, you want to have the better quality of life for, right? So how do you prioritize your diary and your schedule and your calendar in such a way that you're able to show up for all of those things that really matter? And the answer is this. It's not about time management. It's about self-mastery. It's about self-mastery. It's about understanding the things that really matter to me understanding where I need to prioritize certain things, understanding about, you know, in a typical day, there will always be stuff that comes up. And a lot of it actually isn't that important for me, but it might be important for other people. And I might feel like I need to jump in and do something. But here's the real question. What's more important, the immediate or the long term? What's more important, short term satisfaction or discipline? Which one? Which one for you? Which one would you say you show up with more of right now? Are you a disciplined person? Do you do the things you say you're going to do? And I think at this point, it's important for me to talk about the difference between skill set and mindset. 
Because, you know, many of us, when we get into business and we start a small business of our own, many of us, it's because we have a certain skill set. It's because there's a job that we're good at, right? There's a job that we're good at. And maybe, you know, we're sick of working for somebody else. Or maybe, you know, we're in a position where we see a gap in the market that nobody else is doing that well. But we step into that because we have a skill set. But to become a successful business owner and grow and scale an organization, it's not only about the skill set, it's also about the mindset that we have. And I think, you know, a couple of key things to say here, and I'm, I could spend literally hours on this, which I know we don't have today, but a couple of key things to say here, the two main mindsets I want you to think about. One is a fixed mindset. And a fixed mindset says things like, I know, or yeah, we've tried that before. Ah, yeah, but that doesn't work in our industry. Ah, but things are different around here. Or even more personal things like, yeah, but if you grew up the way I did, or if you had the background I did. And the key thing here is a fixed mindset is closed. It's not open to taking on board new ideas. Whereas a growth mindset is the opposite. A growth mindset says, hang on a minute, even if I tried something before, you know, this isn't then. And I'm not the person I was then. And maybe the thing that didn't work in the past might work for me now. Because some of the things I'm going to be talking about around how to make better use of your time, you might have heard before. But it's one thing to know something and it's something else to do it. And maybe you even tried some of these things and they didn't work for you before. But it doesn't mean they wouldn't work for you now. Because as I already mentioned, everything that I'm going to be sharing with you is already being used by lots of people very, very successfully. So the key thing here really is keeping an open mind and keeping an open mind, not just as you learn about ways to be more productive with your time, but also keeping an open mind as you start to implement those techniques and those tactics. See, Einstein said, you know, the world as we created is a process of our thinking and it cannot be changed without changing our thinking. So maybe right now you're someone who says, I'm not a morning person. You know, maybe you are a morning person and you, you don't think you're productive towards the end of the day. But maybe you're one of those, I'm not a morning person people. In fact, let me ask you a question. If you're on this webinar right now, have you ever woken up in the morning and when your alarm went off, you immediately hit snooze? Ever at any point in your life have you done that? Did some of you even maybe do it this morning? Yeah, and maybe you don't have to hit snooze anymore. You just yell at Alexa to shut up, right? We've all been there, or pretty much all of us have been there. I don't think I've met anyone that's never used snooze in their life. Now, I want to introduce you to something to, uh, that we call the point of power. And if you're below that point of power, what you're actually doing is staying in bed in your life. Now, does your business ever get better when you stay in bed? And the reason it's staying in bed is because it stands for blame, excuse, and denial. You know, are you denying that there's a problem even? Denial stands for don't even notice I am lying. Yeah, are you just ignoring the big things that need to be addressed? Are you, are you running away from the things that need your action and your attention? Or maybe you're a level up from that and you're making excuses and going, hmm, yeah, but, yeah, but. I know there's a problem, but. Or level up from that, which again, we've all done at times in our lives is we just blame someone or something. Yeah, but in this economy, in this market, you know, following COVID because of Brexit, you know, or because of this person or that person or this company, it's very easy to put blame, excuse, and denial into our lives. But when we do that, we give away control. And as I already said, you know, making the best use of your time is actually about self-mastery. So it's about handling how we show up and what we do next. Which brings me on to the other side of that point of power, because above it, it's all about ownership, accountability, and responsibility. My favorite word of those actually is responsible, okay? Because if I break that up, it means I am responsible. I can't control what happens in my day. I can't control what happens right now. You know, the internet could go off, or my screen could go off. You know, my, my, my slides could stop working, and I'd have to find another way to get this message to you but I get to choose how I do that. And I get to choose what I do next. And the same for you. Yeah. How many urgent things come up in your business on a day-to-day -day basis? How much time do you spend firefighting? But if you look back in a year's time, how many of those things that you spent time firefighting on actually matter? Yeah, with hindsight, how much of it would actually matter in a year from now? 
So it's about being responsible and choosing what to do next. It's about holding ourselves accountable to the things we say we're going to do. It's about taking ownership. Now, the way that this fits together in terms of what we do at Action Coach, we have a six-step framework for how to build any business. And this literally works for every single industry. I haven't got time to go through this today, but I just want to put it up on the screen and just talk very briefly. Because at the bottom there, you can see it talks about mastery and eliminating chaos. Time comes into mastery. It's one of four areas of mastery. Okay, the others, the other areas in there, one is about destination, so getting really clear of where you're trying to get to. One is around delivery. And the other one's about money. Those, those things, those four things, time, destination, delivery, and money are the foundations that we build the rest of our business on. You notice that marketing and marketing and sales, you know, that comes above that. Systemization comes above that. Because if we don't eliminate that chaos, all we do is we grow a chaotic business. So we have to put that stability in first so that we can actually prepare the business to scale. But I've mentioned a couple of times about, you know, time stealers and things that come up and things that get in the way. So let's talk about that for a moment. Let's talk about your day today. In fact, let's talk about your day today and your day every day for the next two weeks. Now, if I said to you, what's going to come up and get in the way, you probably can't tell me. If I asked you honestly what's, what did come up and get in the way for you over the last two weeks, you'll remember the big things, but not the small things. And one of the quickest ways to give ourselves more time to focus on the key things we need to do is to actually eliminate some of those small things. And that starts by recognizing them and seeing that they're there. So the first tool I want to give you, the first technique I want to give you, and I want to introduce you to today is Fairly simple, it's a time audit. Now, you can literally get an app for your phone that will send you an alarm every 15 minutes, okay? You don't necessarily need to do that, but my, my recommended way of doing this is to split your day into 15-minute time chunks or half an hour time chunks. And at the end of every single one of those time chunks, make a note of what you were doing with that time. Make a note of what you did in that time. And you might be going, yeah, but how does that help me, Neil? How does me making notes of what I did? Well, there's a few things, you know, and we can look at how we will review that at the end of a day, at the end of a week, at the end of a fortnight of doing this, okay? But also, think about the process of doing it. You know, think about various different slimming clubs, for example, and them asking people to keep food diaries. Why do they do that? What's the real reason for doing a food diary? It's not for someone else to check it and go, oh, you shouldn't have eaten that. Or, no. It's to focus on things, because if you've got to honestly write down everything you eat, do you think the things you eat change? That's the same thing with time. If you've got to write down everything you've been doing with your time, what do you think happens to the time that gets wasted? What do you think happens to the, you know, I went to check one thing on LinkedIn and 25 minutes later, I was still there. What do you think happens to the, ah, uh, yeah, I'm going to watch one episode on Netflix, but then actually ended up sitting down and watching three, right? Now, those, some of those things will be in your working day, some of them will be outside of your working day. But if you're struggling to fit in some of the key activities that need to be done to move, to, to move your business forward, what should you be doing with your time? Now, the most key thing with this, by the way, is honesty. It's being completely honest about what you are doing. Because if you're not being honest with yourself, you're back below that point. You're back into blame, excuse, and denial. So you have to hold yourself accountable, and you have to be completely honest with the way you do this. But I guarantee you that going through this activity even for a week, you will start to identify areas where you could make more time for yourself. Um, and then the next thing with this is to go, well, hang on, how do we break this down? How do we review this? So, you know, we've got all of these notes. Well, hang on a minute. How much of that time in there was proactive and how much of it was reactive? Yeah, how much of it was, was on things that I'd actually planned and intended to do versus how much of it were things that just, you know, they came up during the day. Yeah, they weren't expected. They weren't part of the agenda I'd given myself. They weren't things that I thought I was going to be doing. They were things that I'm finding I need to do. You know, things that have been put on my desk by someone else, things that have come as an interruption from one of my team or an interruption from a client. And how much time do you spend fighting fires? You know, similarly, if we take that into another direction, you know, how much of what you do is important versus how much of it is urgent? 
you know, how much of it is major for the direction of your business and how much of it is minor? How much time do you spend wasted doing minor things that don't move the needle forward, that don't get you moving in the direction that you want your business to be in, in, you know, three months, 12 months, 18 months, three years, five years from now. Yeah, how clear are you on the outcome of where you're trying to get to in the first place? And then everything that comes up, well, does this move me forward or not? Does this move me forward or not? You know, and one of the key things as well is, you know, when it comes to other people's time management, how well are you managing your own? Because the better you manage your own, the easier it is to then teach these techniques to other people. You have one of my clients in with me yesterday, actually, for a coaching session. And we've been working on their um, use of time and their investment of time over a number of sessions now. And now we're starting to roll it out more to their team. So some of the, again, what, another thing I'm going to be showing you in a few slides time, actually, something we call a default diary, they, they've rolled that out with their team. Something else that we use that we call a frog sheet. They're now starting to roll that out with their team, right? So it's do it for me, roll it out to other people, teach people about the way I'm protective of my time and I make sure I invest it into the right things. So again, how can I segment that time down? And there's something called the Eisenhower decision matrix. And you may have heard of this before. You may not, I don't know, but I want to explain it to you very briefly now. And it basically says everything that we do falls into one of four categories. Okay, so either it's important and urgent, or it's important, but it's not urgent, or it's not important, but it's urgent, or it's not important, and it's not urgent. And it's really easy. All we need to do for those four different things are one of four actions. So if something is important and it's urgent, we just need to do the thing. Whatever the thing is, we just need to do the thing. If something is important, you know, it's critical for our business, it's critical for our success, but actually it's not urgent, we need to put a deadline on it. We need to decide when we are going to do that thing. We don't need to do it right now, but we need to get it on the schedule. We need to get it on the calendar. And by the way, what's the most important appointment you'll ever put on your calendar? It's the ones you make with yourself to work on your business. Because the only way you're going to move the business forward in the direction you want is when you commit time to doing that, when you invest time in doing that. And you'll notice I use the word invest quite a lot during this session. Because if I said to you, you know, you've got, go back to the money, right? And I said 168,000 earlier, right? You've got 168,000 pounds. And the reason I don't say 168 pounds is because it's such a small amount of money. But you're 168,000 pounds. That 168,000 pounds, if I said to you, you've got it for a week and then it's gone, but you can spend it or you can invest it, which one would you do? Which one would you do? Would you spend it on toys and having fun? Or would you invest it in a way that actually it's paying you dividends in the future? Because that's exactly what we need to do with our time. We need to focus on what are the activities that are an investment of our time that will give us a dividend in the future and keep us moving forward. If it's urgent, but it's not important, we delegate it to somebody else. And I, again, I just want to stress here the difference between delegating and abdicating. Okay, because there is a big difference. Abdicating is, I'm not doing this, I throw it over the wall to you. Delegating is I pass it to you, and I pass it to you with a clear instruction of what you need to do next. So I set you up to succeed. I don't throw it to you and, and hope for the best. Okay, taking responsibility, making yourself accountable is handing something over to someone that's capable of doing it in a manner that sets a very clear expectation. But what do we do about not urgent and not important? Anyone want to guess? I'll tell you, we just delete it. You just don't do the thing, right? If it's not urgent and it's not important, why are we doing it anyway? Take those things off your schedule. Take those things out of your to-do list. Either they are important or they are urgent or they shouldn't be getting done. It's that simple. And, you know, sometimes I get asked, well, how shall I split my time between these four boxes? There is no exact science. But to give you a rough idea, you know, the not urgent but important zone, it's about 20% of your time. The urgent and important typically will be about 60% of your time. Urgent and not important, about 10%. And the not urgent, not important, as much as I tell people to delete it, they rarely do. It's called distraction, by the way. It is those things like getting caught up in social media. You know, that distraction, 10% of your time. 
If you can keep it to within 10% of your time, you will still improve your productivity to versus if it's 20, 30, 40% right now. And again, ask yourself honestly, you know, where, how do you split your time on this? Do the time audit and you will find out and you will confirm it. A couple of testimonials for you from clients that have been doing this stuff. Um, Steve here talking about 1st January memory that he's worked normal office hours instead of starting at 4 a.m. and finishing at 10 p.m. And Sarah talking about how she's able to step away from her business for a holiday, confident that her team will take care of things for her. A key thing in there is how she uses her time to manage that team. You think about it. Your job is to lead the team. The team run the systems. The systems run the business. And part of those systems is is around time. How do we make use of time? And lots of us have talked about things like KPIs in business, right? What are your key performance indicators? What is your focus right now? How do you know what you should be doing? How do you know if the business is working? What are the key things that you measure and review on a weekly basis or a daily basis or monthly basis? You know, and there's the obvious things like your profit and loss. There's your obvious things like looking at your accounts and you know, how much money have we got in the bank and you know how much we owed in terms of outstanding invoices and things like that. But then there's also the aspect of you know, the, like the internal results that don't show up outside of the business. They don't show up on any kind of statement anywhere, but they are key indicators of how well this business is working. And some of that then filters into KAIs, so we've talked about key performance indicators, but KAIs are key activity indicators. Again, think about it. You know, you might have a key performance indicator around something like sales. Well, there's a level of activity that generates that level of sales. Or you might have something around orders being shipped. Well, there's a, a, live, a level of activity that creates the product or service that you're actually shipping out to that client, right? So it's thinking about the two things in tandem. What's the performance? What's the outcome? But also what's the activity that feeds into that? What are those key activities? And how do they show up on your calendar, on your schedule, on your diary, on your team schedules? Yeah, how do you run your team meetings to make sure everybody's on the same page and everybody's focused on the right thing? In fact, let me ask you a serious question. You came here today for a reason. You're watching this for a reason. Whether you're watching it live or you're watching it on demand, you're watching this for a reason. What is that reason? What's the goal? What are you trying to achieve? How personally motivating is that goal? How much does it mean to you? you know, why do you want to achieve it? How will you measure it? What does it mean to you in terms of you personally, not just in terms of the business? What's the thing that if I said to you, there's one big thing that you want to achieve over the next 90 days, for example, that will move your business forward, that will take you into the next level of where you want to go to in your long-term vision and your long-term plan. What is it? What is it? How are you measuring it? How is it showing up on your diary? And if we've said specifically around a time goal, you know, how many hours are you working right now? How many hours do you want to be working? You know, quite often, I will meet someone for the first time that we, you know, we haven't started coaching yet. Okay, and we're having a conversation. As part of that conversation, you know, maybe someone's working 50, 60, 70 hours a week. And all they really want to do is get down so they can take like one day a week off and spend time with their family. You know, so what would it mean to that person? If that's you, what would it mean to you to have that quality time back to do the things that matter to you, the things that you enjoy, the things that you care about? What does that actually look like? Because the more you understand why you want to do something, the more you understand you know, the outcome you're trying to create, the more consistent you will be in terms of the activities you do to get you there. Which brings me on to the other side of every type of goal, right? And that's the reality check. Yeah, what's holding you back? What's the situation now? What's getting in the way? You know, if, and like I say, if you're here learning about better ways to use time, my guess is you're probably working more hours than you want to. Why is that? What is the thing that gets in the way? Is your business under-resourced? Do you not have enough people? Or are your people not productive enough? Are you personally productive enough? You know, if I got you to do the time audit, and by the way, I encourage you to do that time audit that I've been mentioning. If I got you to do that time audit, how much wasted time would show up on there? How much wasted time would show up on there? How much strategic time is there? How much tactical time? How much operational time? 
how much time actually just gets wasted on things that really don't matter and don't need to be done at all. And again, very often people say, I don't waste any time. I'm so busy. But when you do the exercise, you might find otherwise. You know, there's one particular business owner I'm thinking of right now that I've done some work with who, you know, they were convinced they never wasted any time and they were just working stupid hours. And when they did this activity, guess what? They found one thing that they were doing at least three times a week for 45 minutes at a time that could have been reduced to three phone calls at a maximum, probably just one. But you think about that. How much time are they getting back? It's over two hours, right? It's over two hours coming back. So the key thing with this is, you know, making sure, making sure that you are focusing on, you know, where, where does my time need to be? And where is it now? And how honest am I being? You know, if I asked you, what's your most important thing right now? And then I've got you to pull out your calendar. Is it on it? Do you make appointments with yourself? Do you know what your week looks like before the week even starts? I want to introduce you to another one of the tools. Okay. Talked about a time audit. And I mentioned this briefly already, you know, we've done the time audit, we've done the decision made tricks. I know we're doing this very quickly this morning and at quite a high level, but I want to make sure you get maximum value from this, which is why I want to introduce you to another tool. And that's something that we call the default diary, the default diary. And the default diary is very much about how do I plan what my ideal week looks like? Now I've got an example up on the screen. It may or may not reflect you. It may or may, may, or may not reflect the type of business you're in, may or may not reflect the way that you run your business. But the key here is to take your working days and go, hang on, in 15-minute time slots, what am I supposed to be doing in each of these? You know, if you've got things where you're client-facing, for example, what are those client-facing meetings, right? When are they supposed to happen? And you'll notice as well from this example that things are batched. So if there's a certain type of task, doing that task repeatedly makes it more productive. You know, if you've got to do invoicing, just as a simple example, right? Sitting down and doing all of your invoicing in an hour for a time period will be more productive than doing one invoice every time you need to raise one. It'll be in incredibly quick by comparison because you get into the flow of doing that thing. You're dealing with emails. Do you deal with emails as soon as they come in? Or do you deal with emails two or three times a day? Do you have time blocks where you go, actually, this is my time for dealing with emails because I don't want the distraction. And I've turned the notifications off and it's not pinging at me every five minutes. Actually, I'm going to go and look and I'm going to deal with things because how often is something so urgent that it couldn't wait for another hour? And if it was that urgent, would, other, would people be trying to get hold of you another way anyway? Right? Would, would people be banging your door down literally? You know, to try and get your attention to talk about it. So it's about planning out our ideal week. Now, does that mean that our ideal week looks exactly like that you know, as we get into the week? Of course not. Of course not. There are things that will come up, but I guarantee you, you've got stuff on your diary right now that never gets moved. And it's probably stuff that involves other people, right? So you've got meetings you know, with clients, for example, that those clients are paying for, never get moved. They never get moved. They're always on the diary, 100%. You know, and you're on time, okay? And you, know, you hope that they're on time too. And if you've got two of them back to back, they finish on time to get you to the next one. Always. Well, why not treat everything like that? The appointments you make with yourself, treat it like it's with your most important client because in many ways it is. If you want your business to be a success, you need to treat yourself like you are your most important client. So it's blocking out that time. And then... It's looking at your diary each day. It's looking at things and, and making a plan, right? And I mentioned already, by the way, that you, first of all, you do this for yourself, then you do it for your team. You know, if you want to improve team productivity, team productivity gets better by improving your own productivity. Because it doesn't matter what you say, it's what you do. People will be watching your example. You know, if you run internal team meetings, for example, how do you format them? Is the structure consistent? Do people know what to expect? If something's not on the agenda, do you still talk about it? Or would you make it go on to the next agenda? How much time, if you allow for things that aren't on the agenda, how much time do you allow for that? 
Yeah, how do you structure that? How do you format that? One of the things that we do in our meetings is we have something we call a whiffle, which stands for what I feel like expressing. And we do that at the beginning of every single meeting. We start the meeting with a whiffle. So if there's something somebody needs to bring to the table that's not on the agenda, it comes out in the beginning of the meeting. It comes out in the beginning of the meeting. And then we can figure out whether it needs to be included or not. You know, whether it can be delayed and scheduled for a future point, or actually it's not important, it's not urgent, we don't even need to be talking about it, right? But we can figure those things out as we go through this process. But we've done our default diary. The next thing is to do one of these, okay? And this is what we call a frog sheet. And the frog sheet is about starting your day the night before. Now, what do I mean start your day the night before? It's quite simple. Before you end each working day, review the day you just had and plan for tomorrow. And this should take 10, 15 minutes, probably maximum. Okay. And my recommendation is always on a sheet of paper, handwritten with a pen and literally write out the key things in your diary tomorrow, write out, you know, your review of today, what went well, what didn't go well, what were the lessons? What did I learn? What am I going to do different tomorrow? Remind yourself, what are the big things I'm working on right now? What are the big projects? What are the major outcomes that I'm trying to achieve? Now, how does this diary for tomorrow tie up with the things I know I need to achieve for the week? How does that tie up with the things I know I need to do for the month? How does that tie up with the things I know I need to do for the quarter? How does that tie up with where I want to be for the year? You know, it's that classic, how do you eat an elephant? It's one bite at a time, right? So design the, the big outcome and then come backwards. Break that thing down. Break that thing down. You know, a domino can knock over a domino one and a half times its own size. And if you go on YouTube, I know that's a bit of a random thing to say, but if you go on YouTube, there was a video of a guy demonstrating this. And the smallest domino, he puts it down with a pair of tweezers. He knocks it over and it knocks over a, a domino that comes over to up to like his waist height. And he says, if I had, to, I think it's three, four more dominoes, something like that, this could knock over the Empire State's building. Now, the reason I give this as an example is that little action that we do consistently day to day. That's that small domino. If we keep knocking those over, they knock over the bigger dominoes and the bigger dominoes and the bigger dominoes. If we don't take those small consistent actions on a daily basis, what happens? We can't knock over the big domino when we get to it because we're not disciplined enough. We're not ready enough. We don't have the skills. We don't have the mindset. We don't have all of the things we need to actually move us forward. Yeah, what would you rather have? Consistency? Or regret because that's what it really comes down to how do you create the habits that actually make you structured disciplined and get you the best result and one of the other things that's on this sheet here and the reason we call it a frog sheet by the way is there's a box there that says the frog i have to eat today and it comes from the brian tracy book eat that frog if you haven't read the book i highly recommend the book um, but just to give it in a really simple form, just give it in a really simple form. You imagine you go out somewhere and you've got a gorgeous meal put in front of you. Maybe it's five courses, six courses, seven courses, something like that. But one of those courses is a live frog. The only way you get to eat the delicious food is if you, delete, is if, if you eat everything, right? What are you going to do? You're going to eat everything else knowing you've got to eat that frog last, or you're going to eat the frog first so you can enjoy everything else. What's your frog? What's your frog today? What's the thing you've been putting off? The once it's done, you can stop worrying about it. You can get a clear head and you can get on with the next thing. And what is that every day? How do you make sure you get that thing done first every day? And if it's too scary and you're lacking momentum, what's something you can do that you know you've achieved something for the day that you can then tackle that frog? Because some days are like that, right? This isn't a one size fits all on every occasion. But the big thing is getting that visibility and that clarity. And the other big thing with planning our day is you know, when we're running teams, what are we going to delegate? And are we truly delegating it or are we abdicating it? Now, we're almost up to time in terms of the delivery of these slides, um, in terms of the delivery of this presentation. I know we've got some Q&A to come after it. But just before we get to that, I want to ask you a question. What normally happens when people invest their time in attending a training like this? What do most people do afterwards? I can tell you it's nothing. The majority of people that attend any kind of training for their business or for themselves don't actually take action. They learn stuff and they go, that was really useful and I need to do that one day. One day, I'll take that thing Neil said. One day, I'll do that time audit. 
One day, I'll plan my day the night before. One day, I'll think about the Eisenhower matrix and what do I need to do? What do I need to plan to do, decide to do? What do I need to delegate? What do I need to dump completely? You know, one day, I'll start and figure out my default diary, my ideal week. You know, one day, I'll do this thing. One day, one day, one day. If you look at your calendar and you look at your time, one day is not on it, is it? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they're all there. But one day isn't. It never has been and it never will be. So what I encourage you to do is quite simple. is to take one day, flip the words around, and turn one day into day one. What's the one thing you're going to do today off the back of this training? What is the one thing? What's your biggest like light bulb moment, your blinding flash of the obvious where you go, actually, do you know what? I knew that, but I'm not doing it. Or actually, I've never thought of it that way, and I want to start doing it right now. What are you going to implement today? And as part of that, I'm going to go back to one of my questions that I asked you right at the beginning, which is, do you know what your focus needs to be to drive your business to the next level? Because that's what you should be spending your time on, right? And if you don't know what that focus is, I just want to give you one final thing before I um, you get Sam to come back on and we go through the Q&A. And that one thing is quite simple. I want to give you access to a short three-minute quiz, just 13 questions, that will send you a personalized PDF to actually answer that question for you in terms of where should your focus be? How do you move your business forward to the next level? So it's literally three minutes. So if you're not sure what your action should be at this point or at the end of this session, at the end of the q and if you're not sure what it should be, my recommendation would be take a picture of that QR code and get that up or put that website address into, uh, into your web browser. And we look forward to um, being able, I say we look forward to, it's automated, but I look forward to you being able to get those results, get the response to that quiz and actually tighten up your strategic direction so that you know exactly where to focus your time. Talking of time, thank you for investing your time so far. And Sam, let's move to the Q&A. Well, that was brilliant. Uh, thank you, Neil. I think we probably all learned uh, a lot about that. We're all busy taking notes, but don't forget, you don't need to take all the notes because we're going to be sending out that presentation in the next few days. Um, yes, we've got some questions coming in, and I'd now invite you to put some more in, but just to sort of um, start the ball rolling, um, I don't know uh, all the businesses that are going to be here today, but I know they're all going to be of different sizes. Um, for those that are self-employed, who, who are sole traders, it's a little bit harder to do things like delegation. So have you got any extra tips for those that really have to motivate themselves and sort out their own diaries on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, sure, Sam. I think, there's, I think there's a couple of things to say in there. One of which is, even if you've not got employees in your business, you do have more than one role. So, you know, if you think about what are the different roles in your business? So every, every business has three core departments. There might be other things, but every business has three core departments. Those core departments being sales and marketing, operations and finance, or put in other ways, you know, how do we win business? How do we deliver the business? And how do we get paid for the business that we delivered? How do you split your time between them? You know, where's, where's your strong area? Where's the, what's the bit you're comfortable with? Where's the bit you retreat to when things are uncomfortable? You know, maybe you're an exceptional salesperson and you absolutely love, you know, getting into conversations with client, you know, potential clients and trying to win business. Or maybe you love the delivery of what you do, but you're uncomfortable with the sales conversation. You know, or maybe you're actually you're really good at the finance bit and looking at your numbers, but actually moving the business forward and delivering and making sales is the thing you're challenged by, right? Most of us, if not all of us, will retreat to our, our place of comfort. So my biggest thing would be plan your diary in a way where it's really clear time blocks for each of those roles, even if it's just you, and then you know, keep that commitment to yourself. Yeah, and the, and the concept, I've only got to do this thing for two hours, even if I hate doing it. Yeah, and the frog thing, which I think was fascinating, I think a lot of people relate to that. Is it your contention that that frog should be eaten first? Get get the worst call that you're anticipating the day out at the start of the day. Is that better, or is it just when you're at your strongest or feel at your strongest? Yeah, I mean, my own view is do it first. My own view is do it first. Um, there are there are exceptions to that, but I would say nine times out of 10, do it first. And one of the main reasons for doing it first is because it will be preoccupying space in your mind anyway. If you know there's a big, scary thing you need to do at some point today or this week, you're going to be investing time thinking about it right up until the point that it's done. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's better just to get it done and give yourself the you know the headspace, get rid of the head trash, basically, to give yourself the space to focus on other things. And that book's called Eat That Frog by... Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. Okay, if you want to people look at that. Well, I'll have a look at some of the questions that are in there. Um, we'll just give the first names or, or, or of the people that they're with, if, if they're anonymous. First question, um, any tips for managing other people's poor time planning? Um, yeah, I think that starts with you know, managing your own. I really do think it starts with managing your own. You know, it's given the example of this is how, you know, people see you being productive and then they want to know how and why. I think the other thing is doing one-to-ones with your team. You know, if you plan your diary in such a way that you've got a team there and you could spend 20 minutes a week or 30 minutes a fortnight even, where you sit down with that person and you just talk about, you know, okay, since the last time we met, you know, what's moved forward, what's, what's not moving forward? Okay, what issues are there? You know, what opportunities are there? What are the new things we need to be focused on? Okay, what have you got to do between now and the next time that we meet? So you're effectively going through helping them prioritize what goes on their diary. Yeah. And the default diary thing, don't just do it for yourself, help them do it, help them go, you know, okay, within your role, these are the five, six, seven, whatever it is, key tasks. Okay. How many hours are allocated to each one? What does this look like? Excellent. Uh, Next question. Uh, Mailbox management is such a problem in a meeting and 24 more emails come through. Uh, could you dedicate time each day to going through them or should you deal with them as soon as you can? So again, I think, I, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to that one, Sam. Okay. I think it depends on the nature of your business and where those emails are coming from. Hmm. Now I once worked with a guy, I mean, this is over 20 years ago now who, when he went on holiday, you know how people put their out of office on. Okay. His out, his out of office message said, I'm away for the next two weeks. If your message is urgent, uh, sorry, if your message is urgent, send it to this person. If it's not urgent, but it's important, resend it when I get back. Your message is now being automatically deleted. Right. Now, I don't think the messages were deleted, but it was his way of saying, I'm not going to read through my whole mailbox when I come back from holiday. If it's really important, this person can help you. Oh, sorry, if it's really urgent, this person can help you in my absence. If it's really important, I'll help you when I get back. But you need to approach me when I'm here. I think that one of the challenges we have with email, and I think this, again, this varies depending on the size of organization and the type of clients you deal with. There are people where a large part of their job is sitting at a desk sending emails. When they send an email, they think that everyone else is reacting to an email instantly because that's what they do. Mm. For other people, they, get, they only get to look at their email once a day or twice a day, because they're so busy doing a job that doesn't involve them looking at email, that it's a, it's, you know, it's a minor activity in the, in their day, albeit something major might arrive through email. So my own view of this, a lot of it is about educating people on how best to communicate with you. You If you send me an email, I will look at it, but it might take me 24 hours. If it's urgent, call me. Or if it's urgent, send me a, a WhatsApp message or, you know, a text message because I'll look at that more, you know, more quickly because my phone's in my pocket. Um, there are some people I've worked with where I've told them to turn off email notifications on their phone because it's been such a distraction that it's blocking them from doing stuff. It's like put a time in your diary for when you're going to check email and turn the notifications off. Similarly, even for social media, you know, one of the things I know some people have done to get themselves more productive is they've taken social media apps off their phone. So they only check things like LinkedIn and Facebook when they actually sit down at a computer and do it on purpose. Mm-hmm. It's all about like, uh, uh, life work balance as well. You did that very good quote about six o'clock and dinner. And um, somebody's raised the issue of meetings. There's somebody said, what meetings which you need to be at, but are hugely unproductive. How do you manage this without them taking over your diary? Okay. So the first question is, is it your meeting? Because if it's your meeting and you're running the meeting, why is it unproductive? And the answer is normally because there's not a clear enough expectation of what the meeting's about. If it's somebody else's meeting, Is there a clear agenda and a clear expectation of what it's about? And if there isn't, can you clarify before the meeting? Now, there's there's always, again, depending on the nature of the business you're in, you know, there's always the risk of there's the odd meeting that the person calling the meeting is important, whether that's a client or it's, you know, it's someone else in your organization, but they're important enough that you feel you should attend. But 
very rare is it that if you go back to someone and say, look, I want to make sure that we get the best value for this meeting. We don't waste your time or mine. Mm -hmm. Can we clarify the expectations? Can we clarify the agenda? Can we clarify the outcomes for this meeting? And oddly enough, when we do that, people tend to, um, you know, tend to actually give more focus to the meeting. And if there is an agenda and an expectation during the meeting, can you go back to it? Absolutely, you can. Yeah, hey guys, I hate to interrupt, but I feel like we're going off topic here. And we've only got X amount of time set aside. Yeah, can we draw this back to the main reason that we're meeting, please? And there's a slight side issue to that, but we all live in this new hybrid world. I mean, how do you see the difference? Do you encourage your your clients to to do as many virtual meetings as possible, or, or is it still a really important place of face to face? Again, I think it depends on the nature of the meeting. Mm. I think it depends on the nature of the meeting. I think some things work better when you're in a room with people. I think other things can work perfectly fine, you know, like we are right now doing this through Zoom, right? Yeah. I think. I think each has its place. I think it's important to understand the the reasons why you might want to be in a room with someone. You know, if there's certain sensitivities, for example. Um, but on the flip side, I think it's also important to recognise if people are travelling from you know various different locations, you can massively improve the, the effectiveness of time by not having everyone spend you know two hours in a car, three hours in a car, for a sixty minute meeting. So it's it's finding, you know, it's deciding what's appropriate for the thing you're discussing, what level of depth that you go into. I, I think Zoom and you know similar tools are fantastic, but there's a level of human connection you don't get unless you're physically in a room with someone. And so the big question is the thing that we're doing in this meeting, do we need that level of human connection? Or is, you know, is this medium strong enough? Yeah, I, th I think actually I th when you're planning your time, I think the thing I always fall down on. Uh, particularly since post COVID, actually, when we got out of the habit, is allowing time to park in many cases. Sometimes you, yep. you put your meeting time in and so forth. You don't have time to park, and that throws everything. Um, uh, Collins asked, do you, do you think it's easy to have some things like a default diary printed rather than using everything electronically? And I speak, so, I agree with Colin, I'm a printed out person, but is that a value or not? So, so for me personally, I, I use both. So right. electronic calendar, because it's on my phone, it's on the computer, it's, you know, it's available anywhere. But in terms of planning tomorrow, like the whole, I plan tomorrow today, I do that on paper. You know, I'll plan next week on Friday or Sunday. I, I'm, I'm, I'm wanna, if I don't get to it on a Friday, because Fridays kind of run away from me, because it does happen sometimes, I, I set time aside on a Sunday morning for just like an hour to review the coming week. Again, I'll do that as a paper exercise, because I find physically writing with a pen gives me a different focus to typing on a keyboard. Um, but again, it's it's about what works for you. You know, if you're someone that loves lots of technological tools and you can make them work, fantastic. But I think sometimes it's good to go old school and literally, you know, write journals and write notes. Yeah. And for some businesses, obviously, including probably um, many representatives here, they have to be seven days a week. But if if you can avoid weekend work, uh, uh, do you recommend that? Should your time mean that you can turn your phone off at the weekend? Or uh, Yeah, I, I don't know if it's about weekends versus days of the week. I think it's more about being present for whatever you're doing in that moment. Hmm. So for example, you know, if you're here on this session right now, you know, in the live session, be present for it. If you're watching the video, be present for it. Don't be watching the video whilst also checking your email and making a cup of tea because you won't be doing any one of those things well. You know, when you're at home with your family, focus on your family, not on your business. When you're in the business, focus on the business, not your family. But, you know, it, it's, a, it's about uh, kind of like siloing the activity and being fully present for the activity you're doing, which will also increase your productivity. You know, you will do something so much better if you're not dealing with 27 different distractions at the same time. But, you know, we, we live in a, in a world and a culture where a lot of it's about, yeah, oh, but I can multitask. But can you really, mm. truly? You know, or are you jumping from one thing to another, back, 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 back? And how much of your time is actually being wasted because of the fact you're jumping around rather than being focused on one thing? My own view is we, we're not a species that can truly multitask. No. You know, I think there's, there's minor exceptions to that. Like, you know, I can listen to a podcast while I'm out for a walk. Okay. Mm. That kind of thing I can do. You know, I can listen to something while I'm driving the car. I can maybe watch TV while I'm ironing. You know, there, there are things where 
I can do two, two activities at once, but I'm not sure it's true multitasking because one of them's got my attention, not the other one. You know, going for a walk, listening to something, the walk is pretty instinctive. I haven't got to think about how I put one foot in front of the other. That's the difference. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking at the clock. We've got five minutes to go and we've got about five questions and we promise that we're going to finish on time. Otherwise, what's the point of a session on time management? Some of them <laughs> may be very quick answers anyway. Uh, where can you get hold of the time audit template and the frog sheet template? Um, I can send, I can definitely send you something that can be distributed on that. Perfect. Um, I, I don't, I don't think there's an obvious go download it. I mean, in terms of the time audit, it's 15 minute time chunks. So you can take a sheet of paper or a spreadsheet and just go every 15 minutes, but I'm quite happy to give you a template for that Sam that can be, be distributed. And similarly with the frog sheet, you know, I can send you this as a PDF, Perfect. um, that again can be, can be distributed. No problem. Thank you for that, Neil. Um, how do you rate team planning software like Mundi.com? Do they work? Um, I've got clients that absolutely love it. I've not used Monday personally, but I have used some some other tools, you know, things like Trello, for example, and Asana. Um, I think the big thing is <laughs> how well does it work for you, but how strong is the system before you put it into technology? Yeah, if you haven't worked out the, the workflow of how you work as a team, technology is not going to do that for you. Implementing the technology to support a workflow that you've established can make the workflow better but you still need to figure out what the process is. You know, one of the, if I go back to the, and I only showed it briefly, but the diagram of the six steps to building a business, one of those is about how do you systemize, the, how do you systemize your business? Yeah, how do you take the things that are done on a routine basis and establish what those routines are? Using like productivity tools, things like monday.com as an example, you kind of need to know what the checklists and the workflows and the routines are before you put them into the software, because otherwise it's, it's a random to-do list. Okay, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to put two together because they're quite good here. One, the first one's from Pete saying, um, I like this about doing something when mojo is, is low because we're not always at 100%. And someone else, but I feel sometimes I have too many urgent, important things that I can feel overwhelmed, which can affect my mental health. Um, mm -hmm. Any tips or just reclassify those tasks? Um, I, think, I think there's a few things to say there. You know, overwhelm can happen to all of us. Overwhelm can happen to all of us. What overwhelm normally is, is I don't know what my next step is. If you really break it down into simple terms, it's I don't know what my next thing to do is, what my first thing to do is. And it's normally, you know, overwhelms normally overthinking things and underdoing things. You know, there's, there's a, a saying that says, you know, when all is said and done, a lot more is said than done. It's, it's that thing of take some action. You know, take some action. If you do the wrong thing, it's still probably better than doing nothing. You know, to take some action, move some things forward. If the actions you need to take are super small, but you still need to recognize you've made, made, made some progress, do that. You know, I've, I've had people, again, really simple terms, but I've had people with something like a book, you know, the book's like yay thick, right? And they're like, there's no way I could read a book that big. Okay, don't read the book that big. Read three pages of it. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And guess what? When you've read three pages, read three more. But yeah. you're not sitting down to read the book. You're sitting down to read three pages. So this might be the very last often it's, it, but, it's how do we find the small thing that contributes to the big thing and we just focus on that. Yeah, oh, that's a great point. And um, this has to be a one minute answer, unfortunately, which is a shame. It's a good question, but it might help other people as well. Hi, Neil. Do you have any words of wisdom or tips for running a business around young children where days and weeks can be unpredictable? I'm a service based business. I don't have a team. I have about three short days each week for my business. Just one final tip that might help that uh, viewer and others watching as well. So I, I, I think the question is, when something unplanned happens, how do you handle it? I think, I think that's what re that really comes down to, because even with young children, like there are aspects that can be predictable. There are aspects that can be planned. You know, you, th there can be hours where you know you're available and the, the children, for example, aren't there. They're in childcare or something. If they're with you all the time and you're a business that's kind of an on-demand thing, so I'm trying to think the best way to phrase this. It's that thing of how much of your time are you in control of and how much of your time can get hijacked? Where can you ring fence certain things where you've got someone to support you versus when you don't have it? You know, what tasks are you putting into each area? Because the things where you can't have a distraction, they need to go in the ring fence time if you can get some. The things where it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of distraction, 
then do those at the time where you expect those distractions to happen. Yeah, you know, all of us, regardless of children or whatever, all of us will get stuff that comes in that's completely unexpected. We have to deal with in the moment. It happens, okay? But we can minimize the risk of that by going, when am I planning on doing certain things? Where, where am I least vulnerable in terms of those interruptions? Brilliant. We're bang on time. Final comment was five. Deepak is agreeing with what you said. Humans cannot multitask and neither can computers. It's called about having micro habits. So, um, Neil, I think that's been brilliant. I, I really would have liked to spend more time asking questions, but we, we respect other people's times and they might well have done a diary that says that this finishes at 12 and they're going to do other things. So um, can I, on behalf of all those that are watching now live or in the future, just thank you. I think that was brilliant. I think you, you made a very good point. We've all got to do something about it now. So thank you, Neil. Thank you for no, thank you, Sam. Um, we'll send the slides out and it'll be available online on the FSB On Demand um, sometime next week. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Plenty more FSB um, webinars to come. So look out for them and make the most of your time this weekend. Have a brilliant bank holiday weekend, everybody. Bye.